got video recording. Now we're about to have audio running. And here we go in three, two, one. Just drop that ass, bitch, it's open micers in the house Pop that pussy with that open micers logo in your mouth Chase him with his bald ass head, take a look in and bread Open micers, bitch, heard what I said Drop that ass, drop that ass, open micers in the house Drop that ass, pop that pussy, open micers in the house Open micers in the house, open micers is a mouse Drop that ass, pop that pussy, open micers in the house The mic is now open That's right, the mic is now open, my name is Jason Robbins I'm Jacob Craig, and you guys are joining us for our very special July 4th Kid Rock America Spectacular <laughs> episode. I'm so excited to be here with you, Jason. Happy 4th of July. Yeah. <laughs> Putting the Jew in 4th of July. Let's go. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Starting already. Jesus. Coming in hot. Coming in hot, boys. Coming in hot. So why were you late tonight? We're starting late tonight for some reason. First of all, I was three minutes late. Um, Grandpa is grumpy because it's three minutes past his fucking bedtime. Mm -hmm. um, no, fucking Steam is updating right in the middle of the podcast. So rude. Uh, okay. um, but why I am late, Jason, is because my brother is out of town. He is uh, visiting his sister-in-law in Ohio. And while he is gone, it is my duty to take care of his pepperonis. I'm taking care of his dogs and his cats while he is gone. And uh, there's another guy that is also taking care of his dogs and his cats. Uh, just in case I can't get over there or I'm busy with the kid or whatever. So there's another guy that used to be his neighbor that's coming over to take care of the dogs. Well, the first time that guy, who's a 19-year-old kid, by the way, so even younger than me, came over to walk his dogs... Um, I come in like, I don't know how much later and try the door and the fucking door is locked <laughs> and the code is working. I'm putting the code in this dumb motherfucker locked the doorknob so that mm -hmm. no one can use the code to get into the door <laughs> and no one has a key to the doorknob. So I spent the last like 30 minutes outside in 90 degree heat trying to mm. break into my brother's house with a credit card that sounds fun yeah dude real fun so that's why i'm three minutes late jason <laughs> and i and i couldn't get it i told him i was like look tell that guy to come back over here and if he can't fix his fucking mistake then tell me if it's more expensive to get a locksmith or a new doorknob and we'll go from there because <laughs> i was just if you're gonna kick it Kick it right, right on the side of the knob. That'll that'll get you right in. Well, it, if the door doesn't go in to either, they all go out. So if uh, I kick it, it'll fuck the door frame. But I was gonna hit the <laughs> knob with a hammer and just fuck the doorknob off. But um, no, that guy showed back up and he said, my brother said he got the alert on his ring camera that someone was there. And like a minute later, the guy called him. He's like, "Hey, I'm in your house." <laughs> Because it, it took him that long to get a credit card and open the door when I couldn't do it in 30 minutes. Wow. I'm not built for crime, Jason. <laughs> yeah, you'd be in jail by now. Yeah, well, and also my brother told me not to do it on the front door so that no one calls the cops. So I'm trying the back door, trying the garage door, and he just comes right up to the front door. Wiggle, wiggle, open. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you take a shower before you jumped on the podcast here? Because I know you're sweaty. After being uh, out in that heat. No, I did not take a shower. Uh, can you smell me? Uh, yeah. Do I smell? Do I smell yeah, that? Right through Zoom. smell a vision I can smell you. <sighs> you can smell me all the way from Ocean Springs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got to take a shower later. Um, Jason, that begs the question, though. When was the last time that you had to, like, try to break into somewhere? Um, I don't remember. I know I've had to do it occasionally. Yeah. Everyone's had to. Um... I, I do remember one time I had to, the, the one time that sticks out in my memory is uh, when I was about 12, 11 or 12 years old at my mom and dad's house. And, you know, me yeah. and my brother were latchkey kids because my mom and dad, we'd get off at school, you know, three o'clock in the afternoon, get home. Parents wouldn't get home till almost six because they worked till five o'clock. Then I got home and usually the key was uh, hidden outside the, the extra key that my brother and I would use. 
and the key wasn't there. I guess my brother must have taken it with him or something. And I had to crawl through the bathroom window, which was always unlocked because it's just, you know, nobody's going to try to break into a house out in the middle of nowhere where we live. So the, the bathroom window usually stayed unlocked. So I opened the window and as I'm crawling in and like ha I'm half in the window and half out, I didn't notice that there was a giant wasp nest up in the corner and I just Gosh. got drilled by like five or six wasps. It was awful. That got me, got me, you know, that tender part, like right under your, your earlobe, like where right in between like your jaw and your, yeah. like the bat, like your, the round of your skull right there. Uh. Like it got me right there, man. Got like, oh, and one got me like on the back on a couple on the hip. Like it was awful. Oh my gosh. So I'm like hanging yeah. in halfway in the, the, the window, just screaming while I'm getting, you know, uh, stung by, you know, half a dozen wasps. So the, uh, that's why I have no tolerance for, for flying stinging insects, insects these days. I just, I kill them all, all of them. Insects. In insects. <laughs> what do you think about the, uh, the Jorah spiders that are here now? Uh, I haven't seen them yet. Have you? No, I haven't seen one. I hope I never do, dude. I mean, I I feel like in a few years they'll you know the new will wear off on them. It'll just be another spider, but I don't fuck with spiders like that. I really don't mind spiders all that much. It's it's the roaches, it's the roaches I can't stand. And here at my apartment, like we don't normally we don't have to worry about roaches because we have pest control that comes in like once a month. But yeah. this time of the year when it's like hot as hell and it rains every afternoon, and we have this huge oak tree outside. So every night, I see at least one roach, either inside or outside the apartment. Like, one will make its way inside, and I have to hunt it down and kill it like a Terminator. <laughs> right. <laughs> you have to go full roach Rambo on it. Yeah, because I'm not, I'm not going to sleep with that thing in the house. The hell no. Like, I don't want to wake up with a roach on my face, dude. That would be... That's uh, the one of the worst things I think that that could happen to you. Like wake up with a roach on your face. <laughs> oh, dude, you think that's bad? Okay, <laughs> and, and my thing is spiders. I woke up one time to I was I was in the bed with my daughter and I felt like something tickling me, and I was like, ugh, she's like tickling me in her sleep or something, <laughs> or trying to get me to wake up. And I I wake up and I feel a fucking spider on my lips, oh. dude. On my lips, so I can't even like <laughs> scream or anything. I have to like, bah! and and I I grab it with my hand, so I feel it in my hand and throw it against the fucking wall. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I nasty. still remember this one time because my mom and dad had a really old house. Like their house was built in 1950, so that house is 70, 74 years old now. So it was like 50 years old when I was a teenager. And used to get roaches all the time in there. And I remember one time, uh, me and my brother had to share a room. And his bed was in, directly in front of the door to the bedroom, which led out into the hallway. And you know the sound that... And and if you don't... If you're not from the South, we're talking about those big, fat palmetto bugs. Like the big, fat cockroaches. You know the, those things sound... Big, fat what? The big, fat cockroach. <laughs> big, fat what? <laughs> Cock... Roach. <laughs> <laughs> but you know that the sound that those things make when they're like, when they take flight, they're like, <sighs> oh yeah. I'm sitting there on my brother's bed and I hear <sighs> coming down the hallway and just a big fucking cockroach is just flying down the hallway. A big, what? <laughs> big, big fat cockroach. <laughs> Uh oh, a what? <laughs> what is it? But anyway, I'm like, I, I'm leaning up on the bed, kind of against the, with my back against the wall, and it hits the wall like right next to my head. And just ever since that day, I've just been terrified of of roaches. It's just I hate them. Yeah, they're not good. They're not a they're not a good bug. Not a good bug to have around. Um, we 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 have them bad here, man. We we have the little German roaches, which. I mean, they're not as creepy or whatever, but like they they, they're suck. so hard to get rid of because yeah. pesticide doesn't work on them. So the pest control here, they can come spray all they want, 
but it doesn't kill them. Um, I think we got rid of them now, but what you have to do is you have to get this, um, this like gel and put it around all of your countertops and stuff and the roaches eat it Ooh. and then they breed <laughs> and the, the babies that come out, they come out um, special because we're not allowed to say the other word now. So you have just this generation of special roaches uh, that are all sterile, and then they just all die out. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, dude, it's like Nazi tactics. It's like fucking <laughs> <laughs> Auschwitz for cockroaches. See, I, I walked in the kitchen the other night, and I thought there was a cockroach underneath kind of the lip of the 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 counters in the kitchen, like along yeah. the floor. Right, cockroach <clears throat> on the lip. Co- cockroach on the floor. Yeah, uh, my cat because yeah. my cat <laughs> my cat was like looking at something <laughs> underneath that lip, and I was like, oh shit, is there a roach under there? So I looked, but it turned out to be a, a cricket. And I like crickets. I'll catch a cricket and take them outside. So it was it was a race between me and the cat who catched the cricket first, and so I could get it outside. If, if he let me catch him, he was he would live, or he could keep running and let the cat catch him, and he would surely suffer a, a fate of death. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. I um change to change the topic a little bit, but uh, thinking about my my brother's house earlier. I really wish that my dad could still be there because my dad was like a for real criminal. Like he would have got us in that house. Like I just one call and that's all we'd have to do. I witnessed it. Like my brother locked himself out of his house before me and my dad got there. Dad just opens the door. This fucking straight criminal shit. Um, but I asked my brother the other day, you'll like this story, Jason. Um, I asked him like what his life was like before I was born because he had uh, his wife had said something about that, you know, that got me thinking about it. And um, he was talking about when they lived in a house in Escataba when my brother was like three years old and he has a lot of vivid memories from back then. And he said that he remembered this one time at like two in the morning, they heard this like really loud music coming from a garage down the street. And it's it scared my brother. He was crying, whatever. And my dad just runs out the fucking door to go like do criminal shit to these people. (laughs) And um, what he ends up doing is trying to fist fight every member of Three Doors Down. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, dude. Three Doors Down was practicing in Uh, in the garage at like 2 a.m. I would have been there. I would have been there cheering your dad on, just like, go, <laughs> do it. Yeah, dude. He tried to fight every member of Three Doors Down, <laughs> and then they closed, they closed the garage on him, and then he tried to get into the garage and kill Three Doors <laughs> Down, dude. He tried to fucking murder uh, Three Doors Down. If only. That, what was there a uh, is there a, a, a branch of the uh, the timeline where there's a timeline where your dad murdered all the guys in Three Doors Down? <laughs> Dude, if my dad got in that garage that night and murdered Three Doors Down, we wouldn't be talking right now because you'd be famous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would be doing this podcast with fucking Todd Harrell from jail. <laughs> oh, I guess you'd be dead, so I wouldn't I wouldn't be doing that either. Oh, well, you can you can uh, do the show with him from jail right now. So. <laughs> yeah, dude, let's call him. Yep, he's he's right. got nothing better to do. <laughs> let's call him, dude. Like, hey, man, get that fucking big old cockroach out of your mouth, you know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> and come talk to us. Let go of the pocket for a minute, Todd. Speaking of uh, <clears throat> band stuff, I had a tweet that kind of went crazy the other day. It was a reply to Eve Six, and they were talking about uh, AI, about how AI. Let me look at actually look it up because they there was something about AI not yeah, being I able see. to take over. I just want to yeah, read the this. the actual tweet here. Uh, All right. If hold on, let me just use my phone. Damn it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I saw this and I thought that it would uh, it would make good good show content to talk about because <sighs> I want to get the story behind this too. And you're done. Okay. And Wally had a good response to it too, but uh, it was from Eve Six from two days ago. It says AI is coming for your job. Uh, quote: AI is coming for your jobs. I'd like to see AI take a Southwest flight with three layovers to open for Hoobastank at a county fair. Which that's a good tweet right there. Good so tweet. I, good I wrote. Tweet. My band opened for Hoobastank once, and I almost got into a fist fight with their road manager. 
And uh, then Wally came in with, I bet the reason is you. <laughs> like, you <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> That's good, man. That's that's good. I love Hoobastank, honestly. Love Hoobastank as a band. I hope those guys don't suck. But what what went what, what went on with the road manager? <laughs> so at, we, at what year we played this place in Lafayette a lot um, back when I was in fall as well. I think it's called City Club, if I'm not mistaken. Um, anybody from Lafayette, let me know. There's it's this big club downtown, and they used to have. They may still be there. I don't know. I haven't been there in over a decade. Um, but we played there um, once it was the, the, once at the to start off our tour. Um, I, I think I can't remember who it was. We we opened for Skindred, and we also opened for Hoobastank there. We played other shows, but those are the two big ones that I remember. Uh, but I can't remember which one was first because one was at the beginning of the tour and one was at the end of the tour. But anyway, when we opened for Hoobastank, it was when that song, The Reason, came out. So they were freaking huge. Like, you couldn't go anywhere without hearing that song, The Reason. Like, you go to the grocery store, you're going to hear that damn song. It was good everywhere. Song. It's a good song. I'm not saying it's not a good song. It's a great song. Um, but we opened for them at, at the city club and we didn't, I didn't get to meet them or anything because they stayed in their, their bus the whole time. So it was like, um, it was another band, us, and then Hoobastank to close out the show. We were the middle band. So the first band plays, then we go up I still never met Hoobastank. We come off the stage and the way it always worked was we get off stage, we go immediately to um, the, the merch table, sign, you know, sign autographs, sell merch, and then we can go do, for like 10, 15 minutes and then, you know, go do whatever you want to do for the rest of the show. And my girlfriend at the time who lived in Lafayette, not, um, in Baton Rouge drove over to the show to, to hang out with me. And so she, I think she was sitting at the merch table with with old Gooter, who has been on the show here before. Gooter, <laughs> fucking legend, dude. And so I, I took, I grabbed her. We were going to go out the back door, <clears throat> around the stage, out the back door to where they have this like back alley, um, a, a parking lot where the all the band buses were. It's where the load in was, like all the bands hang out and everything. It's like a private. Um, you know, parking lot back there. So we were going to go through the back door to go to the back parking lot where everybody was. And as I'm going through, go through the side of the stage, you know, I've got my back, my all access pass and everything. I've got her by the hand. She's following me. And all of a sudden I feel her jerk. And it was Hoobastank's road manager had grabbed her by the arm and yanked her. And was like, you can't come through here. And I turned around and I showed him my badge. I was like, hey, I'm in fall, fall as well. We're going back here to, uh, to the van. And he said, well, she can't come with you. And he, like, yanked her again. So I just ran up and just shoved him as hard as I could. And this dude's, like, a big old fat dude. Like, you know, he's, like, taller than me. Like, 6'6", six, six, probably 350 pounds. Like, huge guy. So, and I'm, like, 180 pounds soaking wet at the time. So I pushed him as hard as I could. And then security ran up and like got in between us and pushed us both back from one another. But I ended up having to take, um, go out the front door and around the building because Hoobastank didn't want anybody going in and out of that door while they were on stage. Mm. So that's what happened. I that's see. the story. How far away is that door from Hoobastank on stage? Like maybe 20 feet from the stage, like behind the stage. Oh, okay. But I you mean, can't see it from if you're out there in the audience. You can't see back there because there's cur big, gigantic black curtains everywhere. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you can't see, then that's fucked. I mean, if he was any better at his job, he'd be like, okay, let me escort you this way so that yeah, exactly. you, I know you're not going to do anything fucking dumb while he was thanks on stage. Yeah. I mean, it's like I'm, I'm not doing anything. All we were doing is just going out back to hang out because that's where the rest of the band was, was out back. So I'm like, I want to go hang out with everybody. And this dude's like, you know, it's like she's like a tiny female and he's like this huge dude and he's like grabbing her by the arm and yanking her around. I'm like, dude, fuck off. What year was this? This was like 2005. 
Yeah, 2005, you could get away with it. If someone tried that now, it would be a whole media fucking thing. (laughs) Well, the thing is, is I wish Mikey had been in there because Mikey has... Mikey is like a pit bull. (laughs) And, you know, Mikey, like, loves... We love each other like brothers, but Mikey is really protective of me. So if anybody tries to fuck with me anywhere, he's going to beat the shit out of them without even thinking about it like he is just, he is simply reaction he doesn't think of, he ha, he's a marine so when he sees something he's just gonna react like he's not gonna think about it he just reacts so he would have like he would have attacked this guy like a raptor like i like like clever girl and he just comes out of you know from the side and just like takes this dude down God, I hope he doesn't watch this podcast. I fuck with you all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's only if I'm in some kind of like, you know, physical or mortal danger. Then he's like, he, he clicks into like Marine mode. Well, we'll see what I have planned for the next challenge video. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see if you're in, in, in any physical danger. <laughs> Cause I saw Mike, Mikey, I've seen him. He, he beat up a guy while we were in Seattle who wouldn't leave us alone. Um, he kept following us while we were walking around the city. So he just turned around and like uppercutted the guy and, and he actually tore his knuckle down to the bone, punching the guy. And oh, sometimes gosh. he was missing and hitting the concrete yelling, I'm sorry, <laughs> over and over again. And then another time this guy, we were in Birmingham at a bar and this guy, um, got in his face because apparently his girlfriend was trying to talk to Mikey but Mikey didn't want to have anything to do with her. And so the guy got in Mikey's face. So I, I watched Mikey pick this guy up by his throat, run about 20 feet, and then choke slam him down on the ground while the guy's friends pointed and laughed. Oh, my God, dude. <laughs> but we, and we, I think we need stuff like this back because this is what, like, you know, not to sound overly, like, fucking toxically masculine or whatever, but that's what makes men men, dude. Well, like, some people if, just need to be punched in the mush, you know, like th- there are people online that just talk shit and just like you would never say this shit in real life because somebody would punch you in the mouth. Exactly. Like like when I was a kid, I wouldn't do certain things because I know if I did those things that I would get my ass whipped. Yeah. So as an adult, sometimes you need a course correction that, hey, if you yank on someone's girlfriend's arm you might get punched in the fucking mouth. Yeah. Like it's just, it's plain like natural consequences. Now everyone, you know, wants to call the fucking police or whatever. No one wants to actually handle their business or even worse. People want to fight with guns instead of fists. Well, you like, know, another no one thing fights is anymore. Lawyers. Nobody fist fights anymore because of lawyers. Like you can't yeah, lawyers and guns. Yeah. Law- <laughs> like nobody, like, I don't know. That should be our rock band, dude. Yeah. Lawyers and guns. You're lawyers and guns. <laughs> <laughs> name the episode. <laughs> well, we can't name it guns. Fuck. Oh, why <laughs> Cause not? Because of YouTube. Oh, yeah. YouTube. Yeah, they suck. Fuck you, YouTube. You don't pay us anything. Kiss my ass. <laughs> but yeah, lawyers have ruined everything because uh, you could get sued for, for having a good old honest to goodness fist fight with somebody over a disagreement. Yeah. See, and that's why I like the idea of right to fight states as well. Uh, so like, I think, uh, maybe not anymore. I, I think California maybe was, but, um, there's a such thing as a right to fight state where, um, as long as both parties are consenting to an altercation, you can call the cops all you want. The cops are going to call the paramedics, make sure no one dies and just take care of the guys after. Yeah. And as long as both parties consent to it, then whatever, like it, they have a right to that fight. They have a right to settle it that way because it's better than wasting everyone else's time with the legal system. Well, which let me look this up. Is, is this is a real thing. Yeah, this is a, no, this is a real thing. Look up right to fight states. Fight states. All right, here we go. <clears throat> I get states rights. <laughs> I don't get right to fight. Let's see. And, and this might not be a thing anymore. They might have abolished it on a federal level, but um, I, I know that it was, and I know, I'm pretty sure California was one as well. Right to fight states. I'm naming this episode. You got to fight for your right to fight. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. There's only two left, Washington and Texas. Oh, of course, Texas. 
And it says that both require a police officer to oversee the fight to ensure no bystanders get hurt <laughs> so if you're and to break have... up the fight when an evident victor emerges. So let me get this straight. If you're in Texas and you're like, I want to fight this motherfucker, you basically you can call the cops. Call and like, the cops. The be like, can you send a police officer down here because I'm about to beat this dude's ass. <laughs> as as long as it's two consenting parties but then i feel like this eliminates the fights too because by the time the cops show up they're like yeah i'm sorry man yeah. you're not such a bad, <laughs> bad guy <laughs> yeah I, I mean makes it kind of makes sense because if you're wait, because it's going to be at least 20 minutes before a cop gets there so light can de-escalate in 20 minutes oh yeah especially in texas dude I mean, the, the cops have way more to deal with in Texas than oh, a fucking a mutual <laughs> exclusive fight. They'll just be like, just fight each other and we'll arrest you both when we get there. Fuck, we ain't got the time. And in Washington, I mean, hell, everybody's either high or jacked up on caffeine. Yeah. Yeah, I'm surprised Mississippi doesn't have this, honestly. I think it would cause, a, a, like, it would solve a lot of problems. I don't know. I don't, I don't trust Mississippi people to, to not have a fair fight. Like they're gonna have like you know a switchblade or True. you know a pocket knife or they're gonna fight dirt. Mississippians would fight dirty. Like there would there would be no fair fight. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I mean, ever since we lost the Civil War, we've kind of adopted different tactics. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta fucking hide something. We gotta hide a weapon. <laughs> In my shoe. <laughs> yeah, I don't trust anybody to not have a weapon hidden or or hell even just like like people around here like. You would, they would stab you with like a screwdriver or something, you know? Hell yeah, screwdriver is a good weapon. Yeah, everybody's got a yeah. screwdriver. You know what everyone else also has? Sock and quarters. <laughs> Put a bunch of quarters in a fucking sock. Uh, is that how you keep your quarters? That's gross. Yeah, dude, that's where I keep my laundry money, just in case someone tries to fuck up. <laughs> Have you ever heard of just a plastic bag? Uh, that's what I use for a condom. Ew. <laughs> you can only fit a penny roll in there, huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Forget a <laughs> jelly roll, eat your heart out. I'm penny roll. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I was going to say something. Oh, yeah. Um, do you remember the the app Rumbler when it came out? Rumbler? Yeah. It's like Grinder or Tinder, but you swipe with people to see who wants to meet up for a fucking fight. And it was called Rumbler. It got taken off of everything. Uh, wait, what? <laughs> this was a real thing, dude. It was Rumbler. You swipe like you would on, on Tinder or Grinder for a match. And if you match, you exchange a location or whatever, and you go fucking fight that person. All right. Oh, so it is spelled R-U-M-B-L-R. Of course it is. Yeah. Uh, well, there's a rum. Oh, here we go. Rumbler. <laughs> Rumbler is an app for recreational fighters to find, meet, and fight other enthusiasts <laughs> nearby. <laughs> you don't yeah, need man. to fight to use Rumbler. With Rumbler Explore, anyone can browse and attend fights close by that other Rumbler users have arranged. <laughs> all for You'd get a life. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dude, this is what? This is a real thing. I don't, and I don't know how it's able to exist either because that's fucking illegal in every state but Texas and Washington. <laughs> Hold on. Is, is this still a thing? I don't think so. I thought it got taken off, but if, I mean, if you can find it and download it, then maybe. <laughs> and it just shows, like, you know, example uh, screens here, and then, like, this. These two guys schedule a fight, and the guy's like, bro, your face is pissing me off. Want to throw down? The other guy's like, hell yeah, bro, I'm going to fuck you up. Cool, meet me behind Fifth Avenue Deli parking lot tonight at 9 p.m. Done. Oh, my God, dude. And then they have That's height and weight. <clears throat> you have your stats on here, your height and weight, your level of fighting, like amateur last fight two weeks ago. <laughs> your special. And just like Tinder, everyone's going to lie about their height and weight. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to make themselves seem smaller so that you accept the fight of them and they show up as like 6'5". Wow, this is crazy. Yeah, dude. They're trying to take Dana White's job. <laughs> They're trying to match make. Uh... And there's got to be some kind of overlap between Grinder and Rumbler 
There's just like a fucking guy who loves getting the shit beat out of him. He's like trying to kiss him while he does it. <laughs> oh man, it's it's says, gotta be some overlap. It still says coming soon to the app store. This there's no way this could get like approved for the app store. There's no way. Uh, no, dude. I mean, it's literally illegal. It's illegal content. It's gotta be. I mean, maybe it's not illegal to have a, a thing setting it all up, but the act is illegal. Dude, do you realize we live in just the worst possible timeline? Like, what happened? Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I, w- I want to know where it all went wrong. Can we just can we just trace it back to when everything just went wrong? <laughs> it's not. We, we don't have Mo here to clear my name anymore, so I'm not going to say what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I can think of a few fucked up answers to that, but uh, <laughs> maybe we should just wrap the episode instead so I don't say anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're we're coming up on the 30 minute mark. So we could start wrapping this thing up. Um so you getting ready for the uh the show on the nineteenth? Are you uh, what what kind of material are you doing? Are you doing new stuff or are you gonna do tried and true material? Oh, I'm doing tried and true, man. I mean, it's gonna be at a, a place in a city I've never performed for before, so I know that it's going to be a completely fresh crowd that's never seen my shit, so I'm going to just bring A plus material. Yeah, I'm going to do the tried and true material because I'll be on. Because uh, if if you, if you haven't heard, if you're new to the show, me and Jacob are going to going to be doing Stone versus Drunk versus Sober at um, where is it going to be at? It's at Rally Cap in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And uh, I'm going to be on Team Sober. Jacob's going to be on Team Drunk. Team Drunk. Team Drunk. All right. Uh, since I'm driving, I have to be team sober, so that's yeah. why that happened. <laughs> Next time you're driving, so I can be team drunk. You don't want to be team drunk, though. I mean, you have a good excuse to be on the best team to be on. Yeah, true. I mean, who? I haven't looked at the uh, the lineup. Who do we know who the lineup is yet? No, it's not public. I don't know who's going to be there. Huh. Well, you know, me yeah. and Jacob are going to be there. That's the <laughs> yeah, only one you know. Yeah, we'll be there. So if you're in the uh, the Baton Rouge area, go uh, get your tickets. I don't. Are there tickets to it? I, I don't know. Yeah, there's tickets on sale. All right. Go to uh, go to LafayetteComedy.com to buy tickets. Okay. Uh, let me look up real quick. See what the ticket prices are. At Comedy.com. Uh, I just want to let everybody know that is in the Baton Rouge area. Upcoming shows we have July. Uh, Stone vs. Drunk Source vs. Sober. Buy tickets. Let's see. Four for the price of three. You can get four tickets for uh for forty five bucks. General admission is fifteen dollars. So it's going to be Friday, July nineteenth. Doors at seven. Show at seven thirty. Um, yeah, they don't have the uh the list yet for who's going to be on there. But our buddy JP Leonard's going to be there. So. Mm-hmm. You know, it's going to be so a fun So is my night. Rumbler match. I'm going to fight someone yeah, during my we, set again. <laughs> maybe we should, that should be our next Patreon as we'll, we'll download the Rumbler app and see if we can find and somebody to have fight. Me fight somebody. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I'll die. <laughs> oh, dude, that's so stupid. Why would you do that? <laughs> Local comedian dies doing something dumb. <laughs> wow. But anyway, anything else you want to throw out there before we get uh, going this week? Not really, man. Um, we, this is our host episode for the month, getting out of the way, and uh, we've got a pretty jam-packed month coming up, man. We've got some some really good guests. Uh, go to openmicers.com to see our full guest list for the month, and go to patreon.com backslash podcast to see the video we just dropped of us trying the flavored sodas, blue cheese and ranch flavored, and it finally makes me throw up. Yes, I throw up <laughs> live on the Patreon, so pay us a dollar to go watch it yeah so that one we can't put on youtube for reasons so we're if you want to see that video you're gonna have to become a patron and you can do that for as little as what a buck a month to to be a patron so if you want to see that video join the patreon which we really could use it because uh we're going to be doing out of town shows again and that money is going to be used for gas and all that kind of Mm -hmm. stuff to get us out of town plus i had to get a new car so we could go to these out of town shows so i have a car payment now so go pledge a dollar a month and uh, help me pay for this car and gas so if you want to see us live become a patron we'll come to your town and entertain you if you're oh, yeah, listening to this. So tell your friends about the show. 
Um, if you have friends that like comedy, like listening to comedians, please tell them about the show. That's how the show's going to grow. We've been growing steadily for, what, two years now, but we need another bump. We've hit a plateau. We need you guys to do some work for us. We need you to go out there, tell your friends, tell you, tell your buddies who like comedy, uh, or you know anybody in your in your family, whatever your your clergy, <laughs> tell them about the show and uh, tell them to listen to the show. Openmikers.com. So that's all I got to say before we get out of here. Is that it? Is that everything? That's all I've got to say about that. Well, let's get out of here. If you want to email us, email us at openmikerspodcast at gmail.com. Openmikers.com is our website. And, of course, linktrees.com slash openmikerspodcast takes you everywhere you need to go. And, of course, go to brezcoffeeco.com to get and use the code OMPODCAST for 10% off your order. We love all of you, and we'll see you again right here next week. And thank you all for watching on YouTube. Like this video. Subscribe to me. You will get a new show every single week. And uh, thanks for watching. We love you guys. And we'll see you next week.